Good morning, and welcome to worship at the First United Methodist Church of LaGrange. Today is Sunday, August 30th. It's hard for me to believe that September is almost here. We miss getting together with all of you in our sanctuary, but we're glad you've joined us online. If you have a chance to stop by and say hello to your friends at church, join us at 11 o'clock on the coffee hour Zoom. Look for the link in your Friday email. And now for a few announcements. The staff met this week to make some plans for our traditional rally day on September 13th, which usually marks the beginning of Sunday school. Of course, it's not a traditional year, but we're planning three outdoor services that, that weekend, along with the chance for our Sunday school children and youth to stop by and greet each other and say hi to Hattie, Jen, and I. Be sure to look at Friday's email for a sign up link for those services. This year we'll be starting with a variety of Zoom meetings for Sunday school. Sunday school will officially start on September 20th. Even though it looks a little different this year, kids are going back to school. So thank you so much for supporting our collection of school supplies and diapers. We have a new mission for September. We'll be collecting used shoes, gently used shoes only, for a business called Souls for Souls. That company will determine how they're best repurposed. And now let us continue our worship. Please join me in the call to worship from Psalm 105. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he has uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Amen. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, thank you for calling us to be here to give you our praise and thanks. Bless our worship service and all those who are worshiping with us right now. May your Holy Spirit inspire and challenge us so that we can be the servants, the people, the disciples that you want us to be. Forgive us from our sins. 
In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray all these things. Amen.
Today's Old Testament reading is from Exodus 3, verses 1 through 15. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that is, it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When Moses first heard God's call, he did not understand what it was all about. In fact, he didn't even know what to say or what God wanted him to do or deliver. It seemed to Moses that he was being sent on a very formidable journey to undertake an important and difficult task. It occurred to Moses that it really did not make sense and did not seem possible even when God assured him that he would be with him. Moses felt unworthy of the call. Imagine Moses was being asked to bring all the Israelites from slavery to a good and broad land flowing with milk and honey. Moses was an ordinary man. He was a shepherd. He felt incompetent to do the job of leading the Israelites. He might have thought that God was joking. He said, why me? God persisted. God did not, did not accept his excuses. God needed Moses and engaged him in conversation. Moses was not easily persuaded but he became interested in what was going on because he turned aside to see why the bush was not burned up. The burning bush caught his attention and his curiosity was sparked. How many of us hear God's call and have doubts? I imagine its person worshiping with us today can think of certain key or pivotal moments in life where you may have had doubts about doing something you felt was important. I was a small group leader of the field education and vocational church leadership program 
at Garrett Evangelical Theological Seminary for the second year students for nine years. And during those years, I heard many cool stories from the students. Some of them received their call from God and they responded instantaneously. Some students took a few years to respond to their call. Others put their call at the back burner and pursued other careers. After years of following their profession and working to earn their living, God did not stop pursuing them. And finally, those individuals gave up their careers and followed their calls to study in the seminary. One example of these second career seminarians was a member of my former appointment at Prince of Peace United Methodist Church in Elk Grove Village. She is Reverend Betsy Evans Ingstrup, who was recommended for commissioning as a deacon of the United Methodist Church in the Northern Illinois Conference last June at our virtual clergy annual session and who will be commissioned on November 13 this year. When Pastor Betsy and her ex-husband had their second child, she gave up her career to become a stay-at-home mother. And it was also during this time when she first heard God's call to ordain ministry. She finished her undergraduate degree with honors, went back to work, and her faith sustained her in her life's journey. God did not stop chasing her until she accepted her call. Seven years ago, she followed her call to go to the seminary as a part-time student while working full-time. In 2017, Betsy earned her Master of Arts in Spiritual Formation and Evangelism at Garrett Evangelical Theological Seminary. She was very active at Prince of Peace Church as the chair of the ushers and acolyte ministries and a member of our worship committee. She also came to serve in different capacities in our district and annual conference as a conference leading member and doing her internship with the bishop's children's table. I supervised her as our seminary intern. Betsy worked with me in many capacities at Prince of Peace, Bible study leader, workshop fa facilitator, worship leader, and preacher. Last month, Reverend Ingstrup received an appointment in Bickley, West Virginia, as the lead pastor of four Raleigh Shared Ministries, a collaborative ministry of three area churches. When I received God's call to a full-time ministry, it came to me so intensely that I wanted to follow the Lord immediately. The uncertainties and challenges were great. In a sense, I had some doubt, probably similar to what Moses felt. At key decision points in life, we strive to follow God's will, but it does not mean that we are free from worry. Sometimes we know God is calling us to do something or even a particular thing, but we do not always respond by doing it. Now you may not be asked by God to deliver his message and bring up an entire nation to freedom from slavery, but we as Christians are asked in our lives to do small, medium, and large tasks. Our calling for a small task might be simply to greet someone that we don't know, and we may be terrified of doing that. A large task might involve a career change or even moving to a new place. Each of us has our own burning bush experience in life. God assured Moses that he would not leave him alone or empty-handed to accomplish the job. God promised Moses that he would journey with him. We need that assurance that God will lead us to be empowered and effective for ministry. Moses was 
able to carry out his responsibilities because God was with him. In our own lay ministry and everyday lives, we're living out the burning bush experience. Burning bush experiences could be calling us to keep our building beautiful and safe for everyone. Direct our music ministries, teach children and youth in the Sunday school and confirmation class, lead worship, teach Bible study, or serve on a committee. We would hear, we could hear rather and respond to God's voice by leading a small group discussion, going on a mission trip, maintaining our church garden, organizing our fall rummage sale, or provide school supplies for others. Other burning bush encounters with God could result in us leading the congregation in its reconciling ministry or bringing a meal for those who are sick. Ministry happens when we listen and obey God's voice faithfully without looking for reward. God knew the Israelites needed help to liberate them from their misery and from a very oppressive leader and community. God believed that Moses was the man for the job of freeing them, but Moses himself struggled with his own call. In the same manner, God needs us to be his messengers to help others be free. Though we sometimes struggle with our call, we are to proclaim God's mercy and compassion in this needy world. God intervenes in human situations if we let Him. We have to put our prayers into action. We all get tested, but don't let difficulties or uncertainty block your hearing the good calling from God. God will work it out, so stay in the faith. Stay positive with Christ. It is all in due time in this world and the next, and all is known by our Creator. If we sit around worrying, we will miss the call of God. Our joy lies in the call and our response. Stick with God. He is calling. We have the ultimate backstop, so answer the call no matter what we face. Let's do the work of God. A man with one arm and one leg can get more done for God than Superman if he prays about it. So let's pray together for our ministries. Let's get energized even if we are treated wrongly sometimes. Even if we are shoved down in a corner by life, even if we feel tired, even if we are knocked down and think we are sick or weak rather, we are not. We have the power. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? God knew the suffering of the Israelites and he acted. He came to help them. When God called Moses at first, he was afraid to look at God. God trusted that Moses would deliver his people. Today, God sees the suffering of many and calls on us to set them free. We cannot turn away from God when we hear that God wants us to help others in their struggles not all of us have the same calling from god as jesus's disciples who are called to different ministries but we have one thing in common the same god who calls us to minister god will empower us to be his bold witnesses when we live this worship service, we are being sent out into the world to serve God and our neighbors. We are asked to make a burning bush decision. We may have some reservations of what God is asking us to do, but we have the same promise that God's divine grace and presence through the Holy Spirit will be with us 
to help us deliver someone from their captivity in the Egypt of their life. No matter what we do to earn our bread, we are to bring change in someone's life and glorify God in our service. The God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob will be with us in building God's kingdom here on earth. With God's grace, we can be the servant leaders that God intends us to be. Are we willing to make our commitment to follow Christ? No matter what the worry and cost will be. What type of burning bush commitment can we make? Folks, Moses obeyed God. God is calling. Do you hear his call? Will you obey God's call today? Amen. In our prayer time together, let us remember those who are struggling with issues of health and those who are recuperating from surgeries, receiving treatments, especially those who are going back to school uh, this school year, some kids and anyone who are involved in education already been back to school. And so let us pray for safety of everyone who are providing education to our children. And also let us continue to pray for the healing of the world. Let us pray. Father God, we come before your presence thanking you for our individual calls. You have called us to be your faithful disciples in many ways, but most especially thank you for calling us to show who you are in our lives and to show your greatness, kindness, and compassion to a world that desperately needs help. Bless us as your disciples and help us to give thanks to what you have called us to do and to be so that together as your people we can be avenues of things that can change life and things that can uh, make this world and our communities be a better place for all of us god i pray for your wisdom and blessing upon those who are involved in education i pray for safety for all the students who are back to school and those who are going back to school in the next weeks. I pray that you will just protect everyone who are willing to help our children grow and um, discover their potentials and to be the people that you have uh, created them to be. 
thank you God for being our God and thank you for being there at all times for us and reminding us that you have created us for a purpose, great purpose, that is to not only be blessed every day, but to share your blessings that you continue to shower upon us. Bless the people who are worshiping with us right now and their families. Bless our church, all the churches in our communities and beyond. Bless all those who are in need of help, God, in their lives, especially those who are uh, not feeling well. I pray that you will grant them your healing and comfort upon those who are mourning the loss of their loved ones and be with those who are receiving treatments and those who are recuperating from surgeries. Grant them strength and healing. Almost especially their God, we pray for healing for the whole world. And also we pray for peace, peace that comes from you. Thank you for being our God and for loving us so much. We pray that we will love you more. In your holy name, we pray all these things. Amen. Now together, let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As you obey God's call, remember that God is with you in your journey. You are not alone to accomplish the task. God's Spirit will be there to guide you. Now receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Go in peace. Amen.